Thank you for checking out Lakehead International's videos. You're about to watch one of our Lakehead International live webinars, a fun and informative way to learn more about Lakehead while also meeting faculty, staff, and current students. If you have any questions throughout today's video, please comment below. Otherwise, let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to another Lakehead International Live. My name is Jordan Ball, I'll be your host today. I'm very excited about today's session and we'll have an opportunity to introduce our student panel in just a minute here, but first and foremost, I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to everyone who's joined us live uh, to hear from our current international students here at Lakehead University and learn more about their Lakehead experience. So with that being said, I will encourage our student panel to join me in camera now. And uh, as they come on screen, I'll call them out and we'll hear a bit about them and where they come from. So we'll kick things off. Martin is the first one on my screen. So Martin, can you tell us a bit, a bit about yourself, where you're from, what you're studying here at Lakehead and also the year level? Okay, so hello everyone. I hope you're hearing me well. Um, so my name is Martin. I am from Colombia. I'm originally from Cali. If you know where more or less where that's around in Colombia, if not close to Bogota. Um, I am in my third, I just finished my third year at Lakehead and will be starting my fourth pretty soon. And I am studying my honors bachelor of computer science. Awesome. Well, thank you again for joining us, Martin. Uh, so to our viewers, of course, you're going to hear from each of our students where they're from and, and the program they're studying. So uh, maybe you want to take a mental note of that or even a, a real note, write it down on paper uh, so that if you have a specific question, perhaps you hear a program, hey, I'm, I'm going to be joining that program in the fall and I want to ask Martin a question about computer science or my next on uh, my list is, is Jane. You'll hear about what program she's studying. So I'll pass it over to her. Hi everyone, I'm Jane, I'm from China. I'm in the MBA, uh, MBA program, I'm in the third, uh, third semester. Uh, I'm very happy to be here with you virtually. Awesome, thank you so much, Jane, we're excited to have you. Um, next, we'll pass it over to Josia. Hi everyone, my name is Josia Prince and I'm from the Bahamas um, and I'm graduating in a month from a four-year program in political science pre-law. So nice to meet everyone. Well, thank you for joining us. I know Josia just arrived back home in the Bahamas, so we are very fortunate to have her on today's session um, to share her, her wealth of knowledge of Lakehead after four years of uh, an undergraduate degree with us. Next, we'll pass it over to uh, Gabby. Hello, everyone. Hey, my name is Gabriela. I'm from Quito, Ecuador. And I'm in my fourth year of my bachelor's of business. Thank you so much, Gabby. Next, we'll pass it over to Hard. Hello, everyone. My name is Hard Patak, and I'm from India, Gujarat. And currently, I'm studying in my uh, first. I've just completed my first year. I'm in my second year. And uh, my course is Bachelor's of Computer Science. Thank you. Thank you, Hard. And we'll pass it over to Deepak next. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Deepak. I'm from India and I'm relatively new as company in Canada. I started in September 2023 and uh, I am in Masters of Education course. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deepak. And, and last but not least, I'll pass it over to Wilhelmina. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Wilhelmina Ampinin. I'm from Ghana. And I'm currently studying economics, master's level. Thank you. Nice to meet everyone. Awesome. Well, thank you to our entire panel for joining us once again. It's it's my pleasure to be ho your host. I've said that a few times, but I truly am excited to hear more about each of your stories at Lakehead and sort of dig a bit deeper into your Lakehead experience. And, and hopefully, um, and, and once again, a reminder to our guests joining us on the live session, please don't hesitate to post questions using the Q&A function. That's going to really enrich today's webinar. So you may hear uh, Gabby or Martin or Deepak mention a story perhaps about their Lakehead journey thus far. And you you are more than welcome to ask for more questions, more more details about that story. Um, so please feel free to send those questions in. But I'll kick things off um, with how did you choose your program of study? So I'll only uh, hand select a few of you. Um, I think naturally I want to go to Josia and Gabby for this one because now you've done 
the four years of your program. Um, so perhaps Josia, you can kick things off and share with the audience. How did you choose your program of study? So I know that's asking you to reflect probably four or five years ago now when you were in high school and, and narrowing down uh, political science pre-law, what, what drew you to Lakehead? So I think it was exactly that, the combo of political science and pre-law. Normally, you don't see them together, like you'll have law classes and you'll go to law school um, and then you have political science. And so I kind of like the merging of the two. So you get a little bit of a mix of both. Um, and how I chose it was kind of special. Like I went through a, a college advisory agency type of thing. So I, I started to do my own research, but I was kind of like, okay, I need a little bit of help. I need a little bit of background. Um, and But I was able to get that research done um, with the help of someone else. But I personally chose it um, simply because of like the mesh of political science and pre-law and the fact that I would get to do a thesis at the end of my um four-year program so I don't have already like a good background to potentially get into law school so the program was was rigorous enough and challenging enough so I could you know get as much experience that I could have from four years in an undergrad well that's that's certainly great to hear and I'm happy to hear that uh you you feel like it was challenging just enough you were successful, obviously, as as I know we're looking forward to watching you walk across the stage in a month here. Um, but thank you for sharing more. I'll pass it over to Gabby next, and then perhaps Deepak, I'll get you to share your input as a, a master's student. I chose Lakehead when I attended two different universities first back home. So I had the pleasure to meet with one of Lakehead agents, and they explained to me what the program is about. I was not sure what was my major in. So what like specifically I want to follow into business. So for the first two years, they explained to me that you have a little bit of everything just to let you know what you prefer, to let you know what it's about and connect into like the information given to the class and what you actually want in the future. So that was really helpful to me. And then I follow up with her we connect her really well. And at the end of the day, she helped me in all the process with my visa, with my application, with everything. So it was really helpful and really support from her part. Well, I'm happy to hear that you made a, a strong connection with our recruitment advisor. I think I know who you're talking about. Um, so I, I hope on our panel today, everyone else has a similar impression. Perhaps if you had an opportunity to work with our recruitment advisor, I will steal this chance to, to remind our viewers, if you're a current applicant, we do have recruitment advisors uh, in country around the world and, and available today to support you in your Lakehead uh, journey and perhaps your decision uh, to narrow it down or explain a bit more detail about your program of study. So please don't hesitate to connect with them um, and hopefully you can build a, a good relationship with them as well. Uh, like I said, last but not least, I'll pass over to D Deepak to share more about why he chose Masters of Education. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, I had an education background in India, so I was a high school teacher, physics high school teacher for, for a couple of years in India. Uh, so Masters in Education aligns with my experience, and obviously I just wanted you know to have a gist of uh, a, a gist of uh, education education sector just of education sector yeah in canadian context canada is a very diverse community it's a diverse country so that's one so one of my friends uh, he is uh, in here he was here now he's a graduate so that's how i came to know about lakehead and obviously then i went to his recruitment advisor through that how that's how i ended up in lakehead so uh, yeah the pro like the uh, as Josia said, the programs are really rigorous, but simultaneously the faculty, the staff, instructors, librarian, everyone is so helpful. Like they are, they are just an email away, provided that you are not emailing them at uh, you know weekends. Otherwise, <laughs> they are very prompt. They are very prompt. They they help me a lot. When I when I was here, I was lost for a week or a month, I would say. But yeah, they really helped me a lot. Awesome. Well, we're going to dig a bit deeper into that in just a moment in terms of the the student supports that are available on campus, what people have accessed and, and 
perhaps what uh, how that's influenced their Lakehead journey. But before we do that, Deepak, you mentioned sort of Canada as an idea, as selecting Canada as the place you wanted to go. And that was a perfect segue into my next question, uh, which I'll pass over to Jane first. Uh, Jane, why did you choose to study in Canada? Of all the places you could have gone from China, what drew you to Canada? Okay, uh, one of my friends uh, studied in US and Europe and now in Canada. So she had a diverse experience in different countries. She told me very straightforward that, okay, Canada is the best country for the Chinese people and all the foreigners, I mean, for the immigrants, so that's the best. <laughs> so I have no question uh, about that. So I just came directly came to Canada and never thought about any other countries so and also i think canada is similar to um i mean us in terms of the culture and the ideology such a thing and i'm quite familiar with that country so i don't think i can you know, experience some cultural shock uh so i can hear that's good to yeah. hear something that we say here at lakehead and, and one of our slogans actually is that we offer a truly Canadian experience, and I know for all of you, you've been in Thunder Bay, so you've experienced a truly Canadian winter, uh, but we also love our springs, our summers, and our falls. So, Jane, have you had a truly Canadian experience since starting here? Has there been something that you've you've only been able to do here in Thunder Bay or something that uh, maybe it's weather-based, maybe it's uh, climate-based? Is there anything that comes to mind for you? Yeah. Um, I Actually, I feel very lucky to be here in Thunder Bay because the local people are very, very nice. I had a very pleasant, um, I mean, the uh, experience with, uh, uh, I mean, it's connecting some way to the local people. They give me help, uh, even they don't know me. Uh, uh, I mean, we are, we, were, uh, we are strangers, right? We don't know each other, but when they saw me and need help, they they offer they offer me help very quickly. I mean, they are very friendly. Uh, um, oh, I will give you an example. One day it was uh, uh, it was snowing very heavily, and I was pulling my uh, uh I was pulling my grocery <laughs> on the way, and a lady would come out come, uh, 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 get off his car her car to help me. Yeah, I I I was very. Uh, you know, touched, and also one stranger sent uh, sent me back to my home because I was lost. I uh, you know uh, on the way in the deep night because my uh, uh, smartphone was power uh, was power off. You know, uh, you know I was uh, useless without my phone. But I came to a stranger, he ordered a car, a cab for me, and paid that money. <laughs> so, uh, so I will remember her my whole life. But because I can't repay. His money. He just sent me back home and didn't leave any message. Yeah, and also I think they had offered me a lot of opportunities to get connected with the local people. I mean, with the Canadians, they would organize some uh, uh some volunteering activities and cultural activities, which you can join to get connected with the local people. Um, because I seldom travel a lot when my uh, when I was in my country. And uh, um, they had given me a very good opportunity to, to translate, to translate. I mean, to uh, uh, from my old country to uh, Canada because I feel I feel the friendliness and the diversity and the inclusiveness here. So I think your first experience in the country is very important. Yeah, because you are you are new to a country and um, you are you you are onboarding. Uh, from a totally different uh, background so for um, sure if yeah. You, yeah yeah if you feel you are connected and accepted you get you feel give you the confidence and the happiness to live here forever <laughs> so yeah <laughs> that I'm certainly very, is a, a canadian yeah, experience that. yeah yeah i appreciate that a lot thank you perfect well i'm happy to hear that your your canadian experience was the friendliness that canada is well known for um, of course, that's something that I, I love to hear from our students when they, they get these one-on-one -on -one interactions with people that are not necessarily on campus at Lakehead, but in our communities, and they're excited to see students joining from around the world and, and learning more about their culture and, and what they're bringing to Canada. So thank you for sharing that, Jane. Um, the same question I'll, I'll pass over to Hard. Uh, why did you choose to study in Canada? 
Hello, everyone. Uh, so basically, I would start like studying in Canada was an like is an, an enriching experience for me, not only academically, but also culturally and socially, because one of the main reason I choose Canada was its renowned uh, education system, which is which is known for its high quality and emphasis on research and innovations. So being at Lakehead University has allowed me to engage with these passionate, uh, the pro passionate professors there and also gave me the access to the state of the art facilities right now, which are present in the, in the modern era. Uh, and it also gave me hands-on learning experience that have uh, that made me understand my feed more deeply. Uh, moreover, uh, Canada's cultural diversity has provided me with the opp opportunity to interact with people from various backgrounds and prospects. So the diversity fosters an in, in, inclusive and welcoming environment for everyone who are whosoever comes here, like from any country, doesn't matter. Uh, and and it, it's, it is a very respectful environment here. It's a very professional environment here. It, it makes you feel good. Uh, moreover, Thunder Bay is actually a very amazing place, a beautiful uh, it has beautiful landscapes and all that stuff. So yeah, that's that's the main reason I choose Canada. It's it's a very amazing country. Thank you for for saying so. Of course, you, you mentioned diversity and you didn't necessarily anticipate that per se, or that wasn't something that you always sought out. But when you arrived, you realized that was a, a big factor for us here in Canada and, and at Lakehead. I think I look at the panel um, and I see students and I, I know each student from different countries. This is a typical makeup of a Lakehead classroom where you can have an opportunity to sit beside somebody who is from the other side of the world and perhaps get to know them a bit more. And I think that's really interesting because the the value that they bring in terms of their perspectives and the, the way they think could be drastically different than you. And so perhaps if you get to work on a, a project together or a group assignment together, having that blended uh, approach that has... You know, if it was a Canadian like myself, I may have a very uh, specific approach to that topic or or that project. But having somebody uh, like yourself are join from um, India, they're going to bring something different in terms of their experiences and their own knowledge. Um, and I think that's a, a really great thing for all of our students here on campus. So thank you for sharing more. Um, next, I will pass it over to Wilhelmina. Uh, Wilhelmina, why did you choose to study in Canada? Okay, so um, it's always been uh, my passion to move to Canada. I think I had this passion starting from high school when I was like sort of planning for my life. I was like, okay, after university, where do I go? Okay, I have to do my master's in Canada. And I chose Canada because it's sort of like a quieter version of America, like America is all is known to be like loud, but um, when it comes to Canada, you don't really hear much of Canada on the news. Like it's a very like quiet like version, like I said, and the quality of life in Canada when I was doing my research was like, it's good. The people are friendly and they have a lot of um, nature. I myself am someone who likes like to be outdoors, to be in the nature. So when I realized that Canada has a lot of that, it added to the reasons why I chose, I decided to come to Canada and to Thunder Bay. Um, when I was doing my research as usual, like um, it was described like the locals are very friendly. And um, I mean, who would, who wouldn't want to be in a friendly environment, right? So that drew me to um, to apply to Lakehead University and to come to Thunder Bay. And um, the course as well, economics, Masters of Economics, the structure of the program, um, like it was looked good to me. It was very in-depth, very rigorous. Um, and compared to other um, the other universities, I preferred Lakehead to like the course of the structure of the program to the other universities. And yeah, all these uh, various reasons as to why I decided to come to Canada. And yeah. 
I love that you mentioned uh, sort of in high school, that's when you you started to build this idea, this dream around coming to Canada. And I, I think back, all best thoughts were were daydreamed in some of the more boring high school classes, if I may so, so yeah. myself. <laughs> Um, and, and that's oftentimes, though, of course, we we have students joining us right out of grade 12 in many cases. And, and so they were in high school, their final year, exploring their options and, and, and making that decision while still making sure they get stellar grades so that they can still join us. So I'm happy you shared that because I think that there's quite a few people that could be in the same boat as you as as they uh, dream as what Lakehead can offer, or perhaps what Canada can offer. So thank you for sharing more, Wilhelmina. Um, Martin, I know I, I haven't asked you that question. I was going to originally, but you've been here for quite some time now. And, and my next question is, what at Lakehead has helped you build a home away from home? So I thought it would be a perfect uh, transition to, to you and to the next part of our webinar. Yeah, definitely. Um, so obviously, it's it's a hard transition to... Um move to another country uh where, where you have no like no roots and no family no friends it's very hard at first uh fortunately for me the transition was a little bit easier because during my high school years i had the opportunity to do uh some exchange programs into canada and also the united united kingdom uh so that allowed me to be able to um just kind of like be able to get comfortable being uncomfortable in in these types of situations and be able to um, settle roots easier in a different country. Um, one of the things that has definitely made my uh, experience in Canada, like how how Lakehead has made helped me build a way a home away from home, um, has been just basically my making friends. Um, I think some of the friends I've made during my first year where I was living in residence, but also in my current workplace, um, I've. I, that was when I made my most long lasting friends and they've really helped me, even though they're not from a, a similar background as I, they're, they're from very various backgrounds. I have friends from, uh, from Mexico, I have friends from China, from uh, the Middle East, and they have helped me just build this home away from home uh, because we're all in the same situation. It's obviously very hard for, for everyone. And by just being together uh, that gives us a sense of like unity and it helps us transition better into this new life. So I would say, yeah, that's one of the things that has helped me build my home in Canada. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing more, Martin. Um, next, I'll pass over to Gabby, who is going to share a bit more about how she's built a home away from home here in Thunder Bay. I think that having the opportunity to connect with different people since the city is not too big, you have the opportunity to uh, know everyone, connect, uh, at least say hi to people you never have contact with. And it's really nice because like it also offers you different activities like intramural sports. So you can meet a lot of people over there just like by playing basketball or soccer. And um, also you have you can build your own club. Right now, I'm the president of the Latin American club. So there you can connect with different people, new new students, exchange students. So that really opens a broad of opportunities for you. Also know different backgrounds because different people from different places may have different ideas from you. And that help you learn a lot about what you want to follow or where you want to go. Personally, I love traveling, so meeting people around the world, it's a really nice opportunity to learn a little bit more about a country or maybe hear some traditions you never heard about and really get into it. So it's really nice to have that opportunity. And I think that it helps you to build a home away from home. So you have different people to connect with and talk about what your preferences are or really share a little bit of your culture to it. Um, I'm excited to hear that you mentioned sort of Thunder Bay being a really good size in terms of being able to connect with people that might seem to be strangers, and they certainly are. You've moved all the way, for, in your case, from Ecuador. So yes, of course, everyone was going to be a stranger right off the bat, but uh, that that willingness to be friendly with you and, and perhaps learn more about you, get to know you a bit more, that's exciting to hear. Um, and I, I am in a similar boat to you, Gabby. I love traveling. I love exploring the world. 
Um, and, and there's certainly a hustle and bustle about going to a big city or, or going somewhere else in the world. But it's nice to come back to Thunder Bay where walking down the street, I'll get a smile from a stranger. Or um, in my case, of course, I've been here for uh, 27 years now. Um, so I know quite a few people in the city. So I, I will walk and it's, it's hard to go somewhere without maybe recognizing someone or having to pop in and say hi. But I, I love that opportunity to be able to build a deeper connection with my community. Um, and Gabby, you also mentioned the, the fact that you're the president of a, the Latin American Club. And that's, again, another perfect segue into my next question to our panel. I will say to everyone, this is an open question for you. So please just unmute yourself if you would like to answer it. Um, how do you get involved in student life? So whether it's sports, student clubs at Lakehead, and, and why is it important to you to get involved? Maybe I can answer that question. Sure. I know you're you're highly involved in sports, Martin. So let's let's hear a stellar answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as, as Jordan is mentioning, I am well ever since I would say high school, I have uh, played volleyball, uh, normally club sport. And I and one of the first things um that I was like concerned about when I um when I got admitted into Lake University was how I would be able to continue that passion for volleyball in, within university. I looked through the athletics webpage and I found that there was uh, there is uh, a volleyball sports club um, at Lake University. And so I emailed the the captain of the club and they, they held tryouts. I made the tryouts on my first year and I've been playing with them ever since my first year. I've had opportunities to play locally in local tournaments. We've also had tournaments in the United States. We've driven down because we're really close to the border here in Thunder Bay. Um, and played with people from from the states and from here from from Canada, and that has allowed me to really get involved in student life. Uh, besides that, during my second and third year, I got involved with the volleyball co-ed club. So it's just basically um, not only not not only the men's club, but also like the co-ed club, which is like mixed as uh, men and women. And now I am the captain of that club. And I've also had the opportunity to participate in academic clubs, such as uh, the Google Developer Student Club, um, which has allowed me to pursue further pursue like my interest in computer science and uh, promote the interest for technology in, in Lake Kitty University. So I would say that some of the, those are some of the things that have, have got me involved in student life. Thank you for sharing more. I am glad to hear that you touched on both the athletic side of, of your experiences, but also uh, a program that, or pardon me, a club that's related to your program which is often the case uh, with our, our clubs here on campus at Lakehead. Um, they're tied to some sort of uh, a topical theme. So whether it's tied to the religion you practice, whether it's tied to the region of the world you come from or some passions that you have, I think that you you will likely find a club here on campus that uh, might be of interest to you. If not, like Gabby mentioned, you can also create your own club, which is really cool. Um, so I will pass it over to Hard next to chat a bit about how he gets involved in student life and why it's important to him. So again, uh, student life is very precious part of when you are studying an, at a university. So you have to be involved in university so that you can make uh, and you can get enough experience about of it. Uh, I will also say that I am also a president of a club named ARIA, which stands for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics Innovators Association. Uh, I am just a first year student and I have recently started that club. Uh, and we have currently got around 51 members in that club and we are hosting events. We are doing uh, a little, little progress in it. So the main thing about here is, uh, as Martin mentioned about the GDSC, it's also a very great technical club here. And we are also collaborating with other clubs to uh, have a larger community of our, uh, of this, this kind of experience. And apart from that, I would also say that uh, the athletic part of uh, Lakehead University is also great. There are drop-ins, drop-in registrations for like as volleyball, badminton, as I used to play badminton and I'm currently also playing badminton. So it's a very, it's like a very great experience, both academically and athletically. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, I'm, I'm going to transition to the next question just because I, I have so many topics I want to talk to everyone about. Um, and I'm quite frankly drawing a blank of who's lived on campus in our residence. Um, so I think Josia has. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll pass it over to you to share what were some of your favorite things about living on campus and, and what would you sort of your advice be to future students about if they're choosing to live on campus? Sure. So I guess the first thing for me is just how close it is to classes. Um, normally, as a political science student, I would be up late in the night reading. And so I'd have to uh, get up kind of early for classes. So sometimes I've had like 830 classes or if you have classes from seven to 10 in the nighttime. So like the long three hour seminar classes, it's better to live on campus simply because, you know, you can walk home within like three to five minutes and you're home, like you're in your space. Um, as well as campus is, is relatively safe, in my opinion. Like I've never had an incident where, you know, we've had to come out because, you know, someone robbed somewhere or because it was like severely unsafe. We have fire drills and that's for like safety precautions, but we've never like had like a extreme case of like, oh, the building's on fire. Um, but other than that, like it's it's safe. There are several keys to get into. I've lived in apartments and townhouses. Um, and so you have like a key to your own room. You have a key to like the main floor if you live on apartments, as well as like a key to like your, you know, general area, like coming into first floor. So it's quite safe. Um, as well as while you live on residence, you have like residence assistants and house presidents. And they plan so many events for us. Like you don't have the opportunity to be bored. You can choose to be bored. You could choose not to go to events, but you have a lot of events, you know, at your disposal. So like we had like a throwing paint on the wall, for like de-stressing for North and South apartments. Uh, my, like on South apartments, we got free dinner for the week of exams. Like those stuff like really helped us because we were you know in the thick of it at the time um and so you have events all throughout the year so literally from september when you come all the way down to april um in the heat of exams and so like you get to de-stress you get to meet people from your floor from other floors from different residences um across the campus and the last thing i would say about living in residence which was quite good um, is that in your personal like apartment space or in your townhouse space, if anything gets broken, um, if you need something like, for example, your vacuum isn't working, you just put in a work order online and you're able to get it fixed. And it's relatively fast. Like the longest I've ever waited for a work order to be fulfilled. And that was because it was like we had to get like a new freezer. That was like three days. Um, so I think that was relatively reasonable. Um, and so I would say residence is a very good option, especially if you're looking for stability um, and you know you'll get the services um, that you that you want to get when you come to Canada, as well as, you know, if you're looking for security and you want to be close to campus, if you're, you know, a person that runs late, um, campus is a is a very good option for you. I feel like perhaps I should be considering living on campus myself so that I can get to work every morning on time. But um, I live I live quite close by, so maybe that's just a bit of an excuse. Either way, thank you for sharing more, Josia. I'm I'm glad you mentioned sort of the stability and and the uh, the idea that you could choose to be bored in residence, but the amount of activities and opportunities to engage is is plentiful. Um, so I think that that's sort of up to everyone else. Uh, if you live on campus, if you live in residence, uh, you get to pick your your journey, your path forward. Whether or not you're going to attend every event, that's okay. It will ebb and flow in terms of your availability. So some weeks you might say, no, absolutely not. I, I need to put my head in the book and, and get through uh, the next couple of weeks in terms of preparing for that final exam or working on those group projects. And in other cases, you might be saying to yourself, well you know what, I have a bit of free time. Let's let's head over to that event and see if I can make a few new friends and, and perhaps uh, connect with individuals uh, on a deeper level. So thank you for sharing more, Josia. Um, does anyone else uh, live on residence right now, currently? 
I don't believe so. I think we're, we've all moved off campus. Deepak, did you live on campus when you first came? I don't know, something to it. The I went to one of my friend's uh, apartment where they, are, where they were living in Lake University. The accommodation and the room was were pretty cozy and pretty, you know, tidy. And the common area outside the rooms, I really can envy of her. Like I was helping her to move out. And because since I'm living off campus, so I was unable to attend a few events, like campus events. Like there are so many events like Lakehead really organizes because I am not, because some of them are like late night events also. So sometimes I do miss, like I miss all of them mostly. So that's another advantage if you are on campus, I would say. Thank you for sharing more. Um, the, the next topic of conversation is uh, what is the most exciting aspects of your program? So Deepak, while I have you, I would love to hear more about um, what are what are your favorite aspects of the Master of Education program? And we do have a live audience question uh, that is asking a bit more about computer science. So I'll, I'll sort of earmark that for Martin and Hard. Uh, keep, keep in mind, I'll come to you next about computer science, but Deepak, share, uh, share with the audience a bit more about uh, Master's of Education and what your favorite aspects are of the program. Say like um like every professor I meet in every course they are like stupendous they are so spot on and they have their own unique feature to facilitate their course they are so seamless so planned I would say and uh, they really develop that analysis and synthesis aspect diving deeper into a topic digging deeper going into the details like there are few things I used to ignore in my day to day life but now I am you know pretty much choosy and picky and going into further details if I see into something probably pondering about because of my master's program the the, the courses are set in, in the way that they are and they are very much related to our uh, I would say day-to-day -day life to some extent or the society or the political structure we are in so yeah you can um you know, extrapolate whatever uh, things, whatever traits you develop into your life as well. And, and and one thing more, like the one thing we have, like it, academic integrity. That that's what is all about when you start here as a as a graduate student or undergrad student. So that is also like integral life. Sometimes people use other other people's ideas. Also, so uh, yeah. Now, so all of the students, most of my colleagues, also in this program, they refrain doing such things even though they are even in even in common day-to-day -day conversations they would quote yeah xyz quoted this yeah this these are not my words so that is something i developed over you know span of six years six months in here for sure and there there's definitely sports available for those students that are thinking well i don't know how to cite anyone i don't know how to to write in in the different stylings um because the thing is that uh as an institution here in canada uh, we we don't have a set guideline in terms of all essays have to be written in a certain format. It it really is faculty or, or professor specific um, in terms of maybe they want APA, MLA, um, Chicago. Th there's a wide range of, of citation styles and writing styles. And it really will depend on what you're writing. So the, the content at hand. Um, so there will be resources on campus for those students that are, are looking to brush up on what that is. I think I would need a refresher if I went back to school at this point. Um, so, uh, I mean, I would probably be joining you in those those resources. Um, next, I'll pass over to Martin. I know that, Martin, you've been in computer science for three years now. So you'll have sort of, maybe I'll ask you, could you chat a bit about that, the in-depth courses, the, the course selection at that third year level? And then hard, you could reflect on sort of as a, as a newcomer to Lakehead, um, what has your first year been like? So pass it over to Martin first. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I'm sure Art will go over this a little bit when uh, when it's when it's his uh, turn. Uh, but basically, during the first years, we just build all of the fundamentation about theory of computer science. Just uh, they teach us how to program from zero. If you have no background in in programming, um, and they teach us some of those basic concepts. And then now in my third year is where I'm finding uh, one of some of the most exciting courses because uh, they really give us a lot of options of um, basically of research and like to research your interests. Um, 
some of them you give you get options for example for game programming if you're interested in that you get a options for also artificial intelligence and um, data analysis and also health informatics. And it, you're not restricted to choosing any one of those during your third and fourth years is when you're giving um, the most program electives to be able to choose what your areas of interest are and to be able to discover what really what your passion is in the in this field of computer science. Um, so that's some of the things that have really interested me during these uh, these last years of my my program, um, specifically during my third year, I had the opportunity to have a class in cloud computing. And during that class, they gave us a project to create a some uh, some sort of um, tool or application using cloud technologies like AWS. And with some of my group members, we were able to successfully deploy a chat app online uh, that I'm very proud about. Um, and we successfully defended it during the 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 end of our the end of the class. And I thought that was a really good opportunity that would now go on my resume and make me look better to prospective employers. So I like that I am give I have I have the opportunity to look at different basically like research areas and be able to find my passion and also to apply the hands-on learning that can help me um improve my resume and my skills in general. Awesome. Thank you for sharing more. Next I'll pass it over to Hard to to reflect on sort of those foundational courses that Martin touched on. Yeah, sure. Like it's my my experience was same as what Martin told. It's I I would like to add is you have to, uh when we are choosing electives and all that stuff, just choose it wisely so that you uh it, it it's not a burden for you when you are doing the electives. It's like a on a, a kind of marks gaining electives. So it would be better if you choose your electives wisely and moreover. Uh, in my first year experience was very great as I had already been oriented to few languages before. So it was kind of an easy thing for me. But uh, yeah, you like the professors here would be uh, making you learn from scratch. So currently in my first and second year, uh, first and second semester, I learned about C and C++ programming. And it, it was from basic to advanced, uh, to intermediate level. And currently it's all going on. So in my second year, it would be uh, data structures and all those stuff. It gradually moves on to what actually I needed in my third and fourth year. So it's a very, like, it's a very good curriculum here. It, it's, it's, it's basic, for, like you can learn from basic to intermediate to advanced level. So, yeah, I would suggest it's a great course. That, that's good to hear, of course. Uh, there could be students who are looking at computer science but thinking in the back of their head, like, I don't know much about computer science. So to be able to join as, a, as someone who's at the beginner or, or as a novice uh, learner, they, they will have the opportunity to excel and hopefully to get up to that advanced level, especially as they progress through the years of the program. Um, I'm going to transition topics once again, and this is one of my favorite topics. Uh, it's what is the best thing about Thunder Bay? And Wilhelmina, I know you mentioned that you love nature. So coming from Ghana and transitioning to Northern Ontario here in in, on, in, in Thunder Bay, um, big difference in terms of, of climate, nature, what you see when you walk out your front door. What have you loved most, though, about that experience? Um, like I said, so um, Thunder Bay is a very quiet town um, compared to other cities. And I love the fact that it's we are surrounded a lot by nature and not a lot of, you know, the um, uh, the city life, um, you know, the lights and everything. And I like the fact that I can take a walk and just enjoy the sun and then the weather and the temperature. And um it's and also the fact that um there's um the lake, the Lake Superior. Um it's actually quite therapeutic, like to be outside and to be surrounded by nature. Like 
I said, and the people like you could take a walk and then you see someone walking a dog and they smile at you. You could pet your dog. I mean, it's refreshing to just be outside. And as someone who loves nature, it's um, it's I like it. I love it. And it makes my stay here very comfortable. And I like the fact that there are lots of um uh little little stores like um you could walk into a tiny like coffee shop and then you could just sit down with your laptop and have some quiet personal time and it feels great to be out there and I've not had um I mean from where I'm coming from I used to be in the city life like in the um capital city and it was too loud with the traffic and all but down here you hardly ever have traffic I mean the bus system is you could like you don't have to get stuck in traffic it takes though it depends on where you're going it takes a while but like you don't have to sit in traffic for like an hour or like for two hours like you could get to it, your destination within 30 minutes or even less and I love all these aspects of living in Thunder Bay compared to like where I'm coming from and definitely the weather I'm a fan of cold weather I like cold weather I really don't like heat so um I like the fall um the fall um season I like the winter winter this year wasn't bad and I guess I'm lucky but I still enjoyed it either ways and spring is also going on well and uh, though I don't I'm not a fan of the rain but like the, so far as the weather is cool like I'm okay so these are all the little, little things that um, makes me enjoy staying here in Thunder Bay for sure the, this winter like you said has been an odd one it was a yeah. mild winter quite warm here in Thunder Bay and now our spring is is doing the opposite of what it usually opposite. does it's it's, it's a <laughs> bit colder so yeah. it's an interesting year of weather but what else can you expect you, you can't predict it um, yeah. Have you been here for a uh, summer in Thunder Bay yet? No, I came here last September. So I think, no, August actually. So I enjoyed a bit of summer yep. and it was very hot. <laughs> <laughs> it was very hot. So, but I like the sun. So it was, it was nice. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, it's, it's so hard to explain. You just have to live the experience of being in Thunder Bay. We're at the edge of the time zone here in Canada um, and so we are in a very big time zone, but that means that the sun actually sets quite late. So uh, at, the, at the longest day of the year, which is summer solstice in June, um, the sun's not setting until after 10 o'clock at night. Whereas uh, many cases, some of you are coming from uh, countries where your, your darkness starts right after work or right after school. So there's plenty of hours in your evening where you can get out and enjoy had a couple dogs on your walk, perhaps, or pop into a coffee shop to hammer out some some projects. So thank you for sharing more, Wilhelmina. Um, mm -hmm. I'll open it to to the rest of the panel. Is there anything that you would like to share about what you love about Thunder Bay? Uh, they all talk about the friendliness and the nature. Yeah, I agree with that. So I would like to mention something else because uh, um, uh, the most uh, because I'm surprised by the cultural activities here. Uh, I didn't expect a lot of that, uh, actually, because I thought it was a small town. People would just live their own life peacefully. So I didn't expect a lot. But here, I really get some very wonderful and pleasant uh, cultural experience. Uh, first, uh, the local people will organize some uh, poems or writing or literature activity. Uh, so I joined them. Though I can I can understand all of those content, but I can feel their emotion, their stories. So I learn more about the, the local people's thoughts and their life. So I can uh, I, uh, I feel get closer and <laughs> yeah more connected with the local people and the local culture. And uh, second, there are uh, also uh, there are a lot of plays, uh, plays and the musician activities uh, here. Uh, I go there. And uh, it's um and uh, I feel uh, uh it, it's a different feeling you know because in you know, the city they just go there and uh, show something but here people will talk with you and talk uh, will, will uh, um, organize a seminar that uh, you can share your uh, your feelings you talk about uh, what you feel yeah I mean you get a deeper uh deeper understanding about the place I think so I like it very much and as a uh, uh, cinema will have some uh, very uh, very famous uh, film, or, uh, I mean, the, the, the exhibition of some uh, uh, very film directors. Um, uh, you know, 
that's not so often in China because usually we <laughs> usually the people will organize such activities at the ground. But here you can uh, watch a lot of classic movies and some very um, I mean not not so popular but very famous movies. So I love it very much. Uh, awesome. I want yeah, that's what I want to say. Thank you. Um, next, I'll pass it over to Deepak. But before Deepak shares more about Thunder Bay, I'm gonna to tell the panel. You are your your last comment on today's session before we wrap things up is you'll have an, a 20 second elevator pitch. What is your advice to future Lakehead students? So in 20 seconds or less, what would you like to let the audience know? So we'll come back to you in just a moment. But Deepak, share a bit more about what you love about Thunder Bay. Okay, great. So firstly, I really like the local coffee shops. So I live pretty close to downtown. So I really love those shops in that area. And secondly, is uh, the city is not so big, but uh, so in that context, because I have been in Brampton and GT area, so commuting in that is pretty hard. Here, it's pretty much easy. Like connectivity is good. Like people say that it's poor, but as per my perspective, I'm from India, so it's pretty good. Uh, you don't uh, uh, need an, um, an hour or one and a half hour travel from one point of city to another. That's not the case with Thunder Bay. And third is the affordability. Affordability, even though the prices have gone up in past few uh, months, but still I see it pretty much affordable in context to like other parts of um, Ontario, I would say. Awesome. Thank you for sharing more. Um, with that being said, I think I'm I'm trying to remember who is the last to speak essentially. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll go with Gabby first. Gabby, in 20 seconds or less, uh, what would your advice be to future Lakehead students? Hey, my my advice will be uh, don't be scared to connect with people. Don't be scared to talk and be friendly with everyone because you never know what opportunities that brought you and also participate in all the events and all the opportunities they can offer. Awesome. As we go through these, I know sort of the last couple people on the panel are going to have the hardest job because their, their ideas are going to be stolen. Um, but next I'll pass it over to uh, Josia. Yeah, I'd definitely say um, make the most of your opportunities here on campus, like use the resources that are available to you um, in order to do well in your studies, but also to take care of yourself. So it's not only about the academics, make sure you're prioritizing your mental health, your physical health while you're on campus. Thank you, Josia. Um, next, I'll pass it over to Martin and then Jane. I would say that. Um... You don't have to have it all figured out from the beginning. Uh, there are a lot of students like myself and like the other panelists that have been in your position. It's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, just trust in the process and uh, do what you're supposed to be doing and everything will uh, go right at the end. Uh, trust that a lot of students like you have been in that position and it's it's hard, but it's possible. I'll add on to that. If you don't, uh, if you're trusting the process, but you're you're confused of the process, which granted it's a confusing process, you've moved to a new country. We have the supports available for you. We have a dedicated team of advisors that are are happy to hold your hand through the the journey, essentially. Um, so I'll pass over to Jane for next, and then I'll come over to Hard. Okay. So I will say you will get the greatest support here. So just ask for help and uh, speak about yourself, no matter what, no matter when. They, you will get the help anytime. I can ensure that. Great, yeah, you have to be your, your biggest own advocate and in terms of being successful. So next I'll pass over to Hard. Yeah, for future Thunder Rules, I would say that uh, the most important thing here is time management. So you should actually master the skill of time management, balancing your coursework, extracurricular activities, Personal commitments can be a way to too much challenging, but key to this is mastering the time management thing. So create a schedule. Uh, there are many productivity tools which are there online, and try to prioritize tasks based on deadlines and whatever depends upon you. So yeah, that's the thing. Great. And next, I'll pass over to Wilhelmina and then Deepak. So the two of you, you have the toughest jobs and so many, so much has been shared. So I will also say, if your advice is to do something, one thing you've loved so far, you're more than welcome to share that as well. 
Okay, so my advice is to put yourself out there. Um, we know we are all coming from different places and it can get scary at times to, you know, you're in a different environment to put yourself out there. But my advice is be brave, be courageous and just if your mind tells you or if your heart tells you to do something, just go out there and do it. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? And just enjoy every opportunity, as um, the others have said, and make use of every single opportunity and also learn how to manage your time very well, because it's a very a key important to succeed in this environment. So um, that's I think that's what I'll say. Great. And last but not least, we'll pass over to Deepak to share more about his advice. Thank you. I have a few. So uh, first one, I would say don't hesitate to ask for help. Uh, yeah, I asked for help a lot of times and uh, it really worked for me. And secondly, be patient. Like patience is a virtue in this case and things really take some time. Third, don't expect too much when you come in here. Just ease into uh, into your student life. Don't expect very much. Like Sometimes students say right away, I, sh I should be earning this. I should that job. Things will happen eventually, but it takes some time. The last one is plan ahead of time, like what you want. The people I know that they, they have done their MED, but still they don't know what they want to do. I am pretty sure there, but I met very few, including myself. We know right away I wanted to be a teacher. So I started my OCT process right away because it takes like seven, eight months to get that certificate. So plan ahead of time because uh, those who are who just graduated, so they are in flight, they are in a dilemma of what to do, who wanted more hours. They are very much desperate. The thing is they didn't plan ahead of Thank you. Thank you so much, Deepak, and thank you to our entire panel. There is one final question, sorry, that I, I marked that I would answer, but I, I don't know who's going to answer it. So it says, can you please share your individual experience at the port of entry? I understand that students go through a lot there and some have even been deported. Um, although I've never heard of the, the deportation, as long as you have the proper documents and you have the study permits, all that. Uh, has Does anyone want to share their own experience with uh, the port of entry and sort of what that process was uh, in terms of just going through um, with an immigration officer? Oh, so, yeah. yeah, go ahead, Josia. Okay. Um, I'll be really, I guess, kind of brief. Um, for me, I just, I follow the instructions that they gave me. So they give you like a list of instructions um, saying, you know, what documents to have just in case at the border. Sometimes they don't check those documents, but however, don't take anything for granted. Just bring everything that they tell you. So like all of the application documents you uploaded onto the platform itself have physical copies of that. Um, as well as um, just be, they literally just asked me one or two questions, like how long was I studying for? What was my program? Um, at that time, I my visa got rejected twice before I came in. So they asked me like, why'd your visa get rejected twice? Um, you know, and you just be honest, like based on the reasons that they gave and pretty much showing like, you know, cause it got accepted that third time, like why, you know, you got accepted and stuff like that. So once they sense that you're being genuine and honest to, you know, in your responses, as they ask your questions, you'll be okay. So you don't have to stress too much. You don't have to worry too much. I literally did not spend more than 10 minutes in front of the officer. He was just like, yep, welcome to Canada. Stat my documents, printed it out. Um, he's like, don't lose it. Don't lose your study permit. Don't lose your work permit. Um, if you have like any questions or any issues, you know, there's like contact information on the back. So it wasn't, it was not a stressful experience. In fact, I think I stressed myself out more <laughs> than I needed to when I was going up there. It was quite chill. Just be honest, um, have all your documents ready just in case, um, and you'll be all right. You'll be okay. Good. I'm, I'm happy to hear that you obviously actioned that checklist and just made sure that you had a copy of everything that could be asked for. Um, and, and like you said, there very likely could be the the fact that they don't ask to see most of those documents. But if they do and you don't have it, that's where you may run into issues. And so that's why we always encourage our students when they're traveling, travel with all of your critical documents and, and especially anything that they've explicitly requested. Um, and then when answering their questions, be open and honest. I mean, you're, you're here to study. You're here to join uh, an incredible institution um, and they're excited to welcome you. They just want to make sure that 
that you're here for the right reasons and, and that you're here to to kick off your program and, and have a smooth transition to your first few uh, days in Canada and beyond that, of course. Uh, when you're actually here in Canada, we do have a dedicated team of international student advisors that are regulated uh, immigration consultants. And so that if you need to do any extensions, if you need to reapply for work permits, if you need to um, perhaps bring your family once you've actually settled into your off-campus accommodations, uh, they are more than happy to guide you in that process. With that being said, folks, it is the end of our webinar. Uh, before I let you go, I want to take this opportunity to once again remind you to follow us and stay connected on social. You can find us at Lake Kid International on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You can also explore our campuses. We we didn't really touch too much about the on-campus experience per se, uh, or, or the buildings themselves, the labs, the lecture halls, but you can explore them from the comfort of your own home by visiting lakehead.ca forward slash tours. On that note, thank you again for joining us. Thank you to our panel. It's been my pleasure to be your host and I hope to work with you again in the future. Uh, to Gabby and Josia, our two students that are wrapping up their Lakehead degrees, thank you so much. Uh, and we wish you all the best in your journey ahead. Uh, thanks again, everyone, and bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, I wanna encourage you to comment below or connect with us on social media. We can be found at Lakehead International on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks for watching once again, and hopefully we'll see you at the next live webinar. Bye for now.